In this video, we are going to be making our own customized Arduino Uno boot and I'll be showing you how easy it is to make one. I'll be explaining everything in detail in very simple terms so that it'll be very easy for you to understand. Everything you need to build your Arduino board is in the description, so make sure you check it out. Let's get started. To make your own Arduino board, you will need Atmega 328 microcontroller, 16 MHz crystal oscillator, some capacitors, resistors, LED, header pins, FTDI programmer, and some connecting cables. The values of each and every components will be there in the description. In order to make our Arduino board, we will need a microcontroller which will be the one doing all the mathematical calculations and doing all the logical decisions. So, which microcontroller do we use in our Arduino board? Here, we will be using Atmega328. This will be the brain of our Arduino board. But this microcontroller can't operate without some basic circuit. In order to function, it just needs a minimal amount of setup. Let's look at the bare minimal configuration. Now. Here we are in Altium Designer. I used Altium Designer to draw the circuit and design the PCB. It's a powerful tool that can be used to design and create your own PCBs for your projects as well as complex and multi-layer PCBs for industrial use. I will leave the link to the free trial version in the description. Also, if you are a student, you will get 6 months license completely free of charge. The link is in the description so make sure you check it out. To get started with the bare minimal configuration, we will need Atmega328 chip. 16 MHz crystal oscillator and two capacitors. Crystal oscillator will be connected between the pins 9 and 10 and the two ends are connected to the ground via capacitors. Why do we need a crystal oscillator? Every microcontroller needs a clock signal and every action inside the chip is based on the clock signal. For the Arduino, clock signals are provided by the crystal oscillator. Once you power up Atmega328, it will work. But that is not enough, is it? We will be making it more stable, versatile and more useful. Let's make it closer to the real Arduino board. This is the point where we will be connecting the input voltage. Input voltage will be connected to a 7805 voltage regulator which will convert a voltage between 7 to 32 volt to a steady 5 volt DC supply which will be fed to Arduino and other components. This 5 volt is fed to a voltage divided circuit which will reduce the voltage to 3.3 volt DC voltage. This will be really helpful when we are connecting modern sensors and modules as most of them works on 3.3 volt. PWM pins are connected to these three pin headers where the first pin is connected to corresponding PWM pins, the second pin is connected to 5 volt and the third pin is connected to ground. This is the pin configuration of most of the servo motors and sensor modules. Which means you can connect our servo motors directly to our Arduino board. Then, here are the unlock pin headers which are connected to the unlock pins and here are the digital pin headers that are connected to the remaining digital pins. And we have some indicator LEDs that will help us troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. This LED is connected to pin 13 of the Atmega328. Now, the next question is how do we program our Arduino board? The Atmega328 chip can't communicate with USB directly. Their way of communication is UART. So, in order to program Atmega328 using USB, UART data from the chip is sent to another module that can convert UART to USB and vice versa which will bridge the two technologies together. In our case, we will be using an FTDI module that will handle this communication between Atmega328 and our computer. This is where we will be connecting the FTDI module. The TX pin of FTDI module is connected to RX pin of Atmega328 and the RX pin of FTDI module is connected to TX pin of Atmega328. So, once the circuit was finished, I started working on the PCB layout. We can simply arrange all the components inside the board, route the tracks and create a board layout and all these can be done within 10 minutes. This Arduino board is designed in such a way that it will be easy for you to connect your sensors and servo motors directly to the board. As you can see here, routing is here on both sides of the board which means this is a dual layer PCB. Once everything is designed, all you have to do is export the Gerber file. I ordered PCBs from PCBWay. PCBWay is a PCB manufacturer specializing in PCB prototyping, low volume production and neat and tidy PCB assembly. And you can get a variety of PCBs with different specifications. If you are interested in making your own PCBs for your project, check out the link below. You can get a $5 discount when you sign up using the below link and get an additional $5 discount at the checkout by providing the coupon code PCBWAYLAB. To order your PCBs from PCBWay, go to PCBWay website and fill in the basic details in the instant order form. From there, you will be directed to a form where you can provide more elaborate board details. 
update your board information in the PCB specification screen. I want to give black color to this PCB so I chose black color for the solder mask. In PCB way, we can select a variety of colors for the PCB such as purple, black, orange and even create a transparent PCB by selecting transparent solder mask. Also, I chose a white silk screen instead of black. On the next screen, we should be able to upload the Gerber file and submit it for a review. Once the review is completed, all that is left to do is add to cart, make the payment and wait for your PCBs to arrive. Once the PCB arrives and you got all the components, start soldering. While soldering, make sure you check the polarity of the components and check the positioning of the IC. Once it is soldered, our Arduino board looks like this. Now, it's time to upload our first code. To do that, connect the Arduino board to the FTDI module and connect the FTDI module to your computer. Make sure you have installed correct drivers for the FTDI module on the computer. Now, fire up Arduino IDE and open the Blink Sketch example. Now, select the board Arduino Uno and select the right board. Once that is done, click on Upload. The code will be compiled and will be uploaded to the board via FTDI module. This is how we can make our own Arduino board. That was cool, right? Everything you need to build your own Arduino board is in the description. Make sure you check it out. If you like this video, do support our channel by giving this video a like and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this. See you in the next video.